So Damn. enjoy, enjoy the food. Yeah. <laughs> enjoy the food. Yeah. You know I will. Yeah. You know I will. Brought to you by John. That's, that's the point. We're gonna, we're gonna step in the name of love. Yeah, I'll get that. Oh, I'll get that on there. Yeah. Oh, of course. Man. We might even get the remix to Bump and Grind on there. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I, I mean, the I, remix. I mean, I'm bump my, I'm bump and grind. Our, we all bump and grind our ladies, right? Yep. <laughs> I know. I, I got I stuck here. Yeah. I wasn't gonna go with the songs. We're we're leaving that, okay. in, leaving that in the dirt. Hey, like, well, yeah, well, we all. Here. I feel like I felt some air conditioning a second ago. Yeah. Shout out to Sean, lady. <laughs> she, that's what she said. No, I'm not gonna be dancing. I watch everyone else dance one time and then that's it. That's how you gonna dance. We gonna get in dance. Great, you had something to say. You went. Welcome. To the Port Away podcast. <laughs> podcast. Welcome to the Port Away podcast. We're just talking about Sean Z. Uh, big days coming up. Yeah. It's about right. to tie the knot. Getting married. After 30 years, he Pretty finally going to do it. Pretty much. No, on the 16th anniversary of Mayweather Judah. Nice. Yep. It sounds about right, huh? Yep. It was about that time. Yeah. Right. And, and who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe something crazy will happen like that A night. rematch? No, maybe you know Yoel, like Yoel Judah and Leonard Eller be that night. Maybe, <laughs> maybe someone will get do something dumb and a brawl will break out. Or maybe I'll do something dumb and like propose at your wedding. Oh, you already. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Or I hit somebody with a chair. Because if somebody did that in mind, I'm hitting you with it. Thank you, Carson. Boy, Carson, be there. Gotcha. I'm putting you through a table. You propose at my wedding. <laughs> that's disrespectful. Adhering in my pocket at Toby's wedding. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Sean, that's, you can't, that's disrespectful, bro. I know, that's why I didn't do it. So instead, you was going to do that? No, I just thought about it. So instead, you upstaged somebody else's Halloween party. Yeah, well, you know, it made sense. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you stole our, You stole my night, man. It made we, sense. Oh, that was all around. We had a good was, night. Yeah, that was a good night. Yeah, yeah, hey, sure. we got to bring that back this year. Yeah. Baby or not. Some karaoke, it, some it, Halloween last, karaoke. Last two years killed us, man. Kids we we had big plans. Yeah, baby. Yeah. It'll be kids. My bop. son gonna be watching your son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll be kids. Bop, to kids bop right. karaoke upstairs. You bring your yeah. You gotta come, man. Mm-hmm. He what? Yeah, you wasn't there. No. What was it? Halloween. Yeah. Halloween years back. Yeah. There's always a fight on Halloween. Yeah, we had a great Halloween party. Will you're looking at the video right now? Sean came in. Uh, Looking like Andre took three thousand. Andre three thousand. Who was? Yeah. I was. I was text changed all mask. I was the worst one in the whole party. I kept. <laughs> I, kept I kept the casual with the soccer jersey. Andy. Andy uh, Carroll. Carson, Carson, Newcastle so, jersey. Yeah. We had a good time, man. We had a your brother dressed up as Michael Jackson. Yeah. Sing karaoke. That was that was a solid time. Is it is it bad that so he dressed like I think it was like the bad he had like the bad your Michael, brother Michael Jackson uh, uh-huh. coat on. That was that's my coat. <laughs> why, why you a snitch? You snitch. No, I'm, not, I'm saying like, is it is it weird that I have a Michael Jackson bag nah, coat you, you in my <laughs> in my? You got a glove. You're in that tax. I had the glove, but the gl- I bought the glove. The glove was weak. I was like, I'll never. Hmm. I would okay. like to see somebody try to fight in some kind of an homage of like a, a fake sequin glove. I don't know. Like, oh, you mean like in the boxing match? Yeah, yeah. Just, I'm, we're a boxing podcast, so yeah. I thought you know maybe we should mention boxing at some point. But <laughs> oh, one second, back, back to the party. Sequin glove. So it was a it was a Halloween party with a co- costume contest. Sean won it, but we wasn't about to give his rich fucking ass the oh, money. So shout out to your boy's wife. Oh man, Bob. Oh, yeah, she was, Bob, uh, she was Bob, Bob Ross. Bob Ross. What's her name? Uh, her name is Coda. Dakota. Yeah, she killed it. Yeah. And somehow Coach Hill yeah. in Las Vegas Every stole mile. the money. Co- Coach How Hill? man just left the house with the and money? He came, Coach Hill was a teacher and a football coach, came dressed as a as a as a inmate. Inmate. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> asked me, did he really just get out of jail that day? Because he sold it so good. <laughs> he, he, he was apparently the self-appointed winner of the contest. Yeah, and was, somehow well, walked away with all the contest money, and no one voted. That's for a him. dirty dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting mad, like while I'm hearing it. I That's a dirty dude. I wasn't there for the voting process, but I like to think he thought, looked in the mirror, was like, "Yeah, I won." Yeah, my man walked away with all that money. I, I, I still this day, I don't know how. Maybe he's like, he I, got, even I got three. the most authentic c- back, costume of them all. Gave it back to the kids, man. He's all about the kids. Like yeah, tricked out the coach here. Yeah. One, more, one more thing before we get going. <laughs> okay. What's in the cup? Yeah, what's in the cup? Milk, milk. Clearly, that's just milk. I said no. It's, uh, a, it's a variety of milk. I said breast milk. They said no. A little lean in there. It's a variety of nah, milk. Did you say a little lean? R.I.P. Pimp C. DJ Screw, but <laughs> could be a little lean in there. No, it's uh no, it's cinnamon cinnamon toast crunch milk. Okay, not home, not personally 
deconstructed. Okay, because no, I was like, nah, you, you'd see the cinnamon at the top. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Does it taste like when you eat all the cereal and yeah, the, at the you are that is some fat that's some fat shit. I want I want some. I want some. I, want, I, I need some of that. You, why didn't you tell me? I never knew that's what it tastes like. I, I had I had another variety of it before, and that was when you made your breast milk joke. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a couple a couple of variants of it out there. So it tastes like after you okay. Yeah. So welcome to the Portaway Podcast. <laughs> Um, the nonsense. This is what we are about. Um, had Showtime some wings, had some wings from last night. Carson, mm-hmm. yeah, we had to get them off the table. Yeah, and two teas yeah, somehow. Hey, shout out to Sean's wife. She get killing it. <laughs> I was gonna say what they called her, but that's kind of disrespectful for you. So I'm gonna... B side on the far side. Boom. <laughs> oh, flex on them. Shout out to far side. Yeah, it, it was quite a quite a display when I came in, but we, we got it out of the way. But I got you. Shout out to far side. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. She but keeps no. passing me by. <laughs> we had, no, we, had, we we watched we watched a lot of fights yesterday. Played some paintball yesterday. Yeah. Watched, watched some fights last night. Paintball was real. We got to get y'all out there. Yeah. Holla if you in Vegas and you know you coming to Vegas. That's kind of what happened this weekend. My guy was coming to Vegas and he said, "Shout out to Nelson." He's like, "Yo, what can we do?" I was like, "Yo, let's hit the paintball." And then you wanted to do it anyway, so it just yeah. all made sense. Can we do it with the fans? What maybe uh, Canelo? Morning of Canelo? Gotta be Canelo. All right. Morning of Canelo. Fans versus Port Away Podcast. That'd be Ooh. dope. I'm with it. Hey, uh, we got a squad too. Hey, shout, we need our producer's daughter. Yeah. She's yeah. about 13. She's a ga- she's oh, game man. changer. Hey, she's a real deal. Listen, so yeah, we, I don't know, girl. this is our second time playing, right? Yeah. And the first game, first time we played with her, I, she would like be having had me dead to rights and I would get her <laughs> somehow, some way. And so, of course, kind of the narrative between her and I is, man, I got to get you this game. You've been getting me every game. And somehow the first game we play, I catch her in the hand, which kind of is like the the um, most common place I get her is, is on the hand. And so after the first game, I walk out and say, you know what? I said, I hit you. I said, and every time right before I get you, there's a tear coming down my eye because <laughs> I don't want to hit you, but I have to get you. Yeah. And we keep playing, and I get her again the next game. I'm like, I don't know how I keep finding you, but, you know, she's like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm like, no, you're not. Come out. I get her again, right? And I think this was the one I got her, right? So I said, I said, listen, I put my arm around. I said, listen, I said, I keep getting you. I, you're going to get me eventually. I said, I'm going to be so proud of you when you get me. Oh, oh, you. I said, but right now, I'm just so proud of myself. Like, I just, oh, re- I really I, played it up. Like that? And that was the game where she came out, ran around, <laughs> and was like, da, 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 da. I said, then you too close, but you got me. And then she just kept on going. Like, the whole, and then, and then the whole family, <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> the whole family went on, like, oh, this little, oh, yeah, this yeah, little yeah. run on that yeah, one. Yeah. So, we got to get her back. Yeah, yeah. man. She's, she's official, uh. I want to apologize to uh, Ron Hafey. Uh, he has, what, how old is your son? 10 year old son. <laughs> Very instructive. He said, hey, and, Anthony. He, he can play too. Yeah. He said, Anthony, me and you are going to go right. I'm going to move up. As I'm moving up, I need you to cover me. I said, I got your back, bro. <laughs> so as he's moving up, I'm da 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 da. As I'm firing, he moves right in my firing lane. Oh. I headshot him twice. Him he right said, oh, somebody sniped me. I'm out. I said, oh, it was me. We're on the same team. I want to apologize to my well, man. Let, let's, and let's also give him full credit because so he gets hit like kind of in the top of the back of the head and says, no, 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 it was me. He literally took about two steps. He goes, all right, cool. I'm still in. You're still in. I was hey. like, I, I would have left. I would have walked. I thought he was going to start I, crying. I surrendered yesterday just because I knew I, yeah, I yeah, was yeah. outnumbered. <laughs> Hey, my man took it. So yeah. Hey, so uh, what day's the Canelo fight? The, May seventh. May seventh. Saturday. May seventh. Saturday, uh, Saturday morning. There it is. Nine a.m. Laws. Uh, Portaway podcast versus the fans. Yeah. Combat zone. We did. Paintball. We finally done. Uh, thirteen zero one one South Las Vegas Boulevard. Boom, boom. We'll, we'll bring the drinks. We'll pay. We, we're gonna take care of everything. Just show up. Just show up. Hey, hey, don't come out there wild, yeah. man. Okay. Oh, they just come. Yeah, they, they, they come. They come. Yeah. All right, Ooh. let's do it. That's but, gonna be a long ass day. <laughs> oh young. my bad. No, no, I'm no. there. I'm he, there. He's young. Right. He's yeah. young. He'll figure it out. It's true. Um, no, but then we so we, we paintball in the morning, watch some fights in the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll be the, I'll be the one to say pretty o- underwhelming most of the fights. <laughs> <laughs> just to kind of get that out of the way. It was a uh, a dull evening of boxing. Yeah. So I think I thought Shushu. I was gonna say let's yeah. let's point out the the high points. Yeah. Shushu, Cobb's fight was fun. 
Yeah, though we're gonna get there. I tell God, <laughs> we're gonna start with shoes here. It's early on the undercard. <laughs> He's like, let me do my thing. Yeah, we're early on the undercard. But it's my fucking no. job. Yeah. We'll start with Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn was in the we'll house. Start with Brooklyn. Yeah, let's go. That was a, and he's not. They mentioned on the broadcast, but he's not known as a huge power puncher. No, but there were there was some serious power on that shot because I said that guy felt like when they dropped the toys, like in Toy Story, dude felt like Woody. He had like an arm up here, leg down here. <laughs> but uh, no, big performance. Shushu is uh, he is looking like he's gonna be a pretty special, pretty special talent. What what, what is that? One thirty. Okay, everybody's at one thirty. Yeah, he he's not the typical fighter, Sean. Like he's for his his especially for his weight, he's tall and relatively long, but he doesn't fight with that that length. He can punch from the outside. He can use the jab. I mean, he can box from the outside, but he doesn't do what you would expect him to do. He fights more on the inside, or he likes to he likes to kind of you know work his way to the pocket, and that's where he wants to work. I think that's impressive. Hey, does he remind you a little of Terrence? I know you guys don't see it. In that he's very skilled in there to engage. Yeah. He's not yeah. there to pop shot. He's not there to to get off and then step out to the side, reset. Yeah. He's he's there to get off and, and to let punches popping. go yeah. in combinations. Yeah, you're right. I love in boxing when after you knock somebody down or out and you still slip a shot. Oh. Because he still slips. Look, I'm, he, I'm he glad you said still, that. And still slips out of the way of the shot. I'm glad coming. you said that because that's when when I talk about being responsible defense, offense to defense, offense to defense. Yeah. When you can throw a punch and also be ready for the return shot, he knows like I'm throwing a hook. There's more than likely is the right hands coming back, which is why he went there. But he's making sure that even if I land his punch, I'm safe. Yeah. Or if I miss his punch, I'm safe. And for three and zero. Oh, of course, we know his background being on the Olympic team and things of that nature. But this early on in his professional career, you see signs of of growth and you see signs of greatness in this young man. And I'm not only saying that because I know him or, or because we have a friendship, but this right here, this is prolific right here. The hook. Mm. And I'm going to be ready for your return. Yeah. That's how it's done. And that's how you hit and don't get hit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, it's a picture perfect yeah. two piece knockout. Frank it, Martin did that recently, um, and I, I think I mentioned it actually when we had him on. It's just mm -hmm. like the fact that you can land like a knock knockdown knockout in this case shot and still know it might not. So let me let me just make sure I'm out of the way. But that's training, special kid. That's like you know he's been training correctly. Yeah. He's been training to throw his combinations and be responsible after his combinations. And we'll we'll get into some of these are, other are guys. Are you saying the main event guy doesn't train like I'm, that? I'm saying we're oh, gonna get okay, into some okay. of these all other right, guys right, cool. that aren't putting it down like all that. Right, that is right, cool. that's how you become a lethal weapon in boxing by being able to hit somebody, stay in the pocket. Uh, stay right there in the range and do what you need to do to alleviate what's coming and then be right there to, to, to box and to hit. Like, that's the game. Yeah. My dude is playing the game correctly. Right. Simultaneous <laughs> offense yeah. to defense, defense to offense. Yeah. Yeah. He literally yeah. punched him into the, you know, watch movies and they got the dead body outline. The chalk outline. That was a chalk, he chalked outline. Him. Yeah. And, and, Kel and Kelvin Davis got a knockout as well. Obviously, Keyshawn couldn't fight, which we're all pretty disappointed about but yeah but it wasn't a gang Pops the song, though was, man because he you're the reason why i made sure to interview this kid and then <laughs> let me also say yeah. this because he, he came I, up big i want us to get the replay one more time i anybody that's played basketball or played football and the you, trunks are so saucy oh, oh yeah they God. were nice oh they were God. nice but they're not smf so right, i got okay. I probably just at them, huh? um if you play um football if you play so basketball sauce. i played a little bit of both uh in high school and definitely when i played football the 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 speed of the game went was was slow as a freshman, got very fast as a sophomore, mm -hmm. and I, and I had to really slow it down as a sophomore. Junior and senior year was no thing, but I'm just pointing this out as a as a freshman. There's some cuts that you can make. They're there, mm -hmm. and then there's some cuts that like you're like yo that used to be there. It's not there until you figure out how to get ahead yeah. of the game. When he slips the jab of this guy and comes back with the right hand, it's clean, it's great on this level. That's not going to always be there. Eventually, the, the, the level is going to change. It's going to pick up. And that first counter won't be there. He'll have to slip again and counter, so on and so forth. But yeah. it's beautiful. It's a beautiful over-the-top counter right hand. 
It's not gonna always be there, but to see him pull it off at this level is is great. And look at him dipping his head down Beautiful. right after, Beautiful. ready for what's coming back. Yeah, man. We yeah. said that to start. The- yeah, I didn't. Did you? Did you? No, you're good. Zach. Like don't four times. Don't let, don't let, don't let him break. Don't let him break you down. Um, it was beautiful. Though. It was. Yeah, it was beautiful. Beautiful. yeah, just to reiterate, I'm just, I'm just so happy that Brooklyn's in good hands still with him. That's yeah. all. Yeah, you know? no, they really are. He's, yeah. he's gonna be. He's gonna be quite a talent. There. Oh, but to go back to what I said to start, I'm. I want to see like. If this is his style and it's just gonna, this is who Shushu is gonna be, or if we're gonna start to see him use more combinations from the outside, um, more jabs and double jabs from the outside. The other thing I love about Shushu, we didn't see on this highlight, but he doubles up with his punches. So, like, he'll throw a double uppercut, he'll throw an uppercut and a hook with the same hand. And that's that's some uh, advanced stuff, yeah. too. So, he's, yeah, especially he's on for the right how, track. How early he is on, but. Um, yeah, other than that, I, and we might as well just stick with top rank on ESPN. Since but Bradley did, did mention that um, about w- wondering how he's going to fight going forward because he said oh. he's not a huge puncher mm-hmm. and he's staying in the pocket. Is he going to fight like that against big punchers? Is he still just going to stay in there? Will he use some of his skills and, and step around and move around and not just stay in the pocket? But so, so you know, something to look forward to yeah. going. But he looked great. Yeah, and then... Um, yeah, the main card, John Bowser started out, wasn't as explosive as I've seen him before, but kind of was what it was. Gets the win, whatever. Henry LeBron was looked good. Yeah, 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 and that was an action-packed fight as well. Um, and then Xander Zayas, uh, another good performance. He, he's he's really good, doesn't get the stoppage. I don't Dominated, know. dominant yeah. performance. Yeah, uh, it, it's one of those things where kind of... I thought Quincy Lavalas really did his job well, yeah. what he was brought in. For sure. He was brought in to, to give this kid a look at something slick, something good defensively. Um, but not a dangerous mm. guy for what was coming back his way. Mm. But um, mm. but he 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 made us. I mm. think he I think Zayas probably came away from this fight with a better punch selection. Jesus. He knows which combinations to throw Jesus. against a guy with a better <laughs> defense and <laughs> and a lot of head hunting in this fight from Xander. I thought I really love his left hook to the body and you know I, there it is right there. But uh, Sean, when you're watching this, could he have made it a little easier on himself and ve- focusing on the body more than up top? You Although know he, he won every round, look good. Yeah, I mean, he had a guy that was taking everything that he that he was given, and I think it's hard to to focus on going to the body when you know you can hit somebody at will to the head. We know that the uh, the, the 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 big knockouts they always come to the head. And we know that, you know, when you want that highlight performance, it usually is going to happen at the head, yeah. you know. So it's kind of hard to tell a guy that can hit you at will, not to hit you at will up top, but hit you at will to the body. And again, when you when you go on 10 or 12 rounds, you understand, like, this is going to be a long fight. I got to break somebody down. That changes everything. Sure. You won't headhunt as much as, you know, this as, as Xander did in this fight. What, what was that? An eight round fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got eight rounds, and you're like, man, I just one more punch, and it it didn't come in this fight. But I'm not mad at him, man. It's uh, you know, he he still was sharp, and he seemed to be doing all the right things in that fight too. And you we, against against no, a guy like you said that came in and really played his his role his very role well. well. Yeah. yeah, and we'll, we'll obviously get to Berlanga here in a second. But Xander is still, he, I mean, he's 13 and 0 now, and he's still what 21. 19. Yeah, I was going to... 19? Yeah, Damn. Like, he was the youngest, I think, they said they've ever signed yep. a top rank. When did so. he turn pro? 14? So he turned pro on the undercard of Shakur versus Joette Gonzalez. Yeah, so yeah, late, late, 17 yeah. maybe. But so if you look at, like, progression, he's still, in all aspects, he's still a kid. A baby. In boxing. So it's like, even if he doesn't get the stop, he's, he's a teenager. Still, he's Carson? a kid. Yeah, he's, he's a still, teenager. Yeah. And it's 13 and 0, but he, he is, he's electric. He's... You can't really... Point out much fault with him, obviously. Dominant performance. Yeah, levels will change, but uh, his man strength is, has come in yeah. a lot quicker than it does for most fighters. Yeah. Not it's obviously can't all be there at 19 years old, sure. but he's developed at a at a younger age, you know, physically more than most guys at that age. Yeah, big big kid, um, explosive, you know, combination puncher. But um, yeah, the main event. I think we say that for last. Okay, we go. Yeah, yeah, that's so the bit. We, we, we all got something to say so about we got that. The zone. Okay, yeah, so, we'll, so we'll go to zone. Um, yeah, we can't get cops last. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bully, Beck the bully, comes back. It's a body shot knockout. Um, it didn't look like it was very fun to get hit with. Um, <laughs> Michael McKinson and, and Martin, whew, that was a stinker. Mm. Um, and to be fair. Virgil would have got him out of there? Uh, p- p- possibly. 
I would lean towards yes, but here the big thing with that is it would have been such a different stylistic fight. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was boxer. It was like spy versus spy. Like it was like yeah. boxer versus boxer. And he's like, no, I'm going to be defensively yeah. responsible. I'm not a big puncher. He's like, how about that? I'm as well. And so, so it was just two guys that, and, and it was a decently close fight, but um, yeah, I, after watching it, I really wish it would have been Virgil. Cause I was like, then we've talked about the test. We want to see Virgil go through. It would have been tested by him in certain ways, but um, yeah, I don't think we need to dwell on that one. But he, then he would have tested Virgil's patience. Yes, for sure. Yes, and yes. yesterday that fight tested the fans' patience. I was gonna say it tested my patience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I still I still like McKinson. I still I still think he's a good fighter. Just the style matchup just wasn't one that was gonna produce a very exciting fight to watch. Two light hitting southpaws. Yeah, and that box. Kind of yeah, a little defensive fighting from the outside. Guaranteed but, fireworks. Yeah, you talk about guaranteed <laughs> fireworks though, really was right. that main event. That was a good Ooh. fight. It was fun to watch. Here we yeah. go, your boy. I, I, I actually your had Cobbs up uh, three rounds to nothing, and then okay. Rocha, I thought, started to take over the fight. But did you guys have Cobbs up early? Uh, not not three nothing, but I, I think maybe two two. I think I had a two two two. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. it was yeah. close. Yeah, in, in it was a good fight in those rounds. They was taking there were, shots. There were definitely a few rounds like, yeah, I could probably lean that way, or I could probably lean the other way. You could have talked me into three zero, but um, certainly <laughs> won the first round. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. then. I mean, I told I told Sean yesterday. So when Alexis Rocha is that straight, edited on? No, or? That's def- he's wearing it. He's wearing it's it. Yeah, he's, he's like, no, he's wearing. It. Yeah. <laughs> when he threw the straight left hand, sometimes when he hooked it, he was a little he was a little wide or he missed. I'm not sure if he missed a straight left hand the night the whole night. It was like, boom, and then that straight left, boom, <laughs> every time. I was like, might might be something to block, and he really didn't. So. It was a he, test he of, was, of was, chins. The other guy just had a better chin. They pulled, took big shots all night. I thought. I just thought for Cobbs, this was like talent and athleticism can get you so far. Yeah. And it got him so far early in the fight, and in my opinion, gave him a little early lead. And then it got him so far in his career to 15-0. and 0. But ultimately, when he went up against a guy who had that amateur background and had the superior fundamentals and was more fundamentally technically sound... Mm-hmm. Uh, his athleticism and talent couldn't overcome that because he still, I think, to me, showed he's a superior a- athletic, athletic, you know, talent to Rocha. He's he's an explosive guy, um, but he ultimately that talent could only get him so far once he ran into a guy with fundamentals, and, and he's not fundamentally. I think sound. that actually goes into something I was thinking yesterday. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but when when Blair was moving around, he looked really good. His footwork when he was moving laterally. But any time they got in close range, his defense was, it was gone. Mm-hmm. So it goes to your thing, athleticism. He was able to move. He got good footwork. But then the fundamentals, defense being a key fundamental. Anytime they got close, he was getting tagged. But then he'd get back on his bike. He'd move around a little bit. And I was like, okay. And then he'd get him in the corner. And then he unleash on him again. So And not everybody's right to what you were saying. Sean Porter or Manny Pacquiao, where yeah. if you're doing that constant, constant up and, you know, bouncing movement, constant motion, you're going to get exhausted, most guys. Mm-hmm. You know, really, you know, you and Manny, great conditioning, were able to do that. Yeah. But with him and his fights, he can only do it in spurts after the first couple rounds because, uh, you know, not being Keith Thurman in, in that fight with Barrios, I felt like he's using a lot less wasted motion now when he would step over because before he'd take three or four, you know, just Big be on hops, that yeah. hops, right? Yeah. And so that that kind of took an effect on his conditioning in the fight. And, and once... Once that gas tank slowed down a little bit and he couldn't just use those legs to zip in and out of range and he was forced, like Carson said, to stay in range, that's where, you know, uh, the flaws really hurt him. But. Yeah, I think the the number one thing I saw about Cobb was just discipline. He didn't have, he doesn't have the discipline to beat Rocha, you know, um, from the movement. I mean, if, you, if you're going to move and that's going to be the boxing style that you're going to use to win this fight, you got to be consistent. What does it take to be consistent? Discipline, you know. So the moments where he decided, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand here and try to slip," that wasn't what was gonna be effective against Rocha, and it ultimately cost him in the fight. Um, there's other things like he's got fast hands from the outside, but he's not running his hands. It's, as soon as Rocha gets into my space, I'm running my hands and I'm stepping around. But there come, there, it's a, it's a it's a matter of maturity and also the. With, with maturity comes discipline yeah. to do what's required. And I just felt like while I'm watching the fight, 
You can see the talent is there. You can see athleticism definitely there. I would say it's more athleticism than it is talent. And I think that, um, you know, you get with a guy like Freddie Roach, he can polish the, the athleticism, but then you got to worry about the talent. Are sure. you a talented boxer? You know, and I think that talent from a boxing standpoint is more than just physical. I think that it's also mental and, and what's in here as well. And I don't think that Cobb has enough here or here to keep him consistently doing what what he needs to do. Um, is this the is this the level that he's that he's gonna the highest level that he's gonna get to? I got a feeling it will be if he's not willing to change uh, those those things. And everybody's different. I I don't know what his training regimen is like. I can just tell that it's not enough in his training that gets him to the fight, yeah. gets him doing keeping staying doing the things that he needs to do. You talked about. Me and also Manny Pacquiao. I think that man. I don't. I don't want to speak for Manny. I'll speak for myself. I knew what I had to do, and it kind of was like. First of all, it was my dad drew that line. It's this or nothing. You know what I mean. So I never, never wanted nothing. So I always did what needed to be done. So accepting what I need to do to win this fight is what always kept me throwing 60, 70 punches around because I knew it was what I had to do. You know. So I think that you know. Cobb's got to mature. He's got to come back from this. He's 32. How much more maturing can he do in the ring? That's well, you can. Years. Oh, I, you can. You can. You know, hey, don't forget what I said. You know, adversity makes champions. That, okay. but I, I said that we, your prime, I believe, is closer to 34. And, and you guys look, look at Ugas. Perfect example. His second start of his career is rolling, baby. Yeah, I don't even know how old Ugas is off top. Oh, not, he in not, the thirties. Not that I'm, not that I'm I was like, yeah, no, matter of fact, I don't know how old he is. But do you, do you think Cobb just believe he believed in himself so much? Because this guy, he wouldn't <laughs> care what you told him. Yeah. He think he can beat. He Tyson he, Fury. He thought he could be yeah, yeah. Bud Boots and Errol so, Jr. Yeah, so do you think he, that's another that's another downfall that he just believed in his style and worked so that I don't need to listen to I, so much. I need to listen to you. To Freddie Roach or man, I'll tell you what. There's something there, Sean. You the coaches that you see yelling, they yell because they know what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. They're yelling because they are trying to stress emphasis on this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let I gotta get this point across to you. And I'm not gonna stop yelling until I get this point across to you. This kid is saying I can be this and that guy. And he again, he believes in his athleticism. He believes that. Whatever experiences he's had to this point will get him over against anybody. And then he's got nobody yelling at him to keep him doing whatever he needs to do. So I think, yeah, it's too much of him believing in himself and no one pushing him to do the things that he may, may be overlooking in mm -hmm. himself. You know, so I do. I want to sit. Go ahead. Man. No, because at the end of the day, when y'all in the ring, I know some people be like, what the hell you, like you with Earl Spence are just some examples of. People, you, why the hell are you getting in there? You don't stand a chance in hell. Yeah. I remember as a kid, I was going to one of my games and my dad said, you guys think you're going to win today? I said, I don't know. It's going to be tough. He turned around. We went home. He said, you will never, ever tell me that you think you're going to lose. <laughs> that changed my life forever. Did your dad do the same thing you, Sean, or what? Huh? Did your dad do the same that thing? My, oh, his, that his, changed his, my his, mindset his forever. His aunt's team won that day without him <laughs> <laughs> on the field. <laughs> did, they did win. Do you remember? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> so dad was right. Yeah, See, yeah. They would have lost the field. Yeah, yeah. They were all like, we didn't have any. We're good. Yeah, but it, and it's, 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 sometimes it's just a mindset. This it's guy. Mindset. Yeah, this. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what it is with that guy. I, I know a, a lot of people hate him. He's a character. Yeah, he's. A, I like it. I love what he's doing. Some people, you need to give it. What? How you feel, Carson? It's he, too much. Uh, I I think it's a little too much. He also managed to unite Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr., who both <laughs> who both cooked them. It, it, like, it was like the Dragon Ball Z fusion. They did the fusion, and they were they were cooking them on social media. But but, but he got them to watch this fight. That's and, I would yeah. not have watched this fight if it wouldn't be for the yeah. BS on social media. And and if and if that's what he's he's comfortable being. Who, who the hell am I? And then we we've right. said this on the show. You need a little of that wrestling yeah. stuff. If he, if that's what he if he's comfortable being that and mm -hmm. it's a niche sport. Yeah, that is very hard to get attention. You better and, be able to back yeah. that shit up though. Yeah, it, like well, that. The, he, he, even the knockdown somehow was kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Like 
He like leans down, he gets hit, and his hair goes flying, and he goes flying. And then when they stop it, he gives them a little rumble drill oh, and, and gives them the much. shoe shiner to the, the ref. <laughs> that was too much. Go ahead. You, you've had some, some some stuff to get off your chest. I feel like. Did no, you see no. that? What? Yes. You saw it? Like, he's getting hit. He's getting hit. He's blocking and he's doing all this. What, 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 then, what, what was he doing? I got to imagine his eyes are closed and he felt the arm embrace him, but he just went. <laughs> what, what was that? Why, why did he do that? Like, You're the boxer. <laughs> Why did he do that? Thankfully, they were some soft shots. I, I know. Feel like, what so, if the ref would have just been like, what the? I don't mean to be mean. All right, be mean. But I got to figure, honestly, I got to figure, you know how when people are are, are yelling back and yeah, forth, and, yes, then, and then no, nobody takes a step forward and you're saying, Hold un- back. until until the arm, until NBA, somebody's yeah, like, yeah, come on, let's go. No, and then you, all that, I, yeah. I got to figure that. He, nothing came until he felt yeah. like it was over. And he's, he's like, like, he said, damn, I knew I forgot body he said, punching. He said, I was like, I'm he forgot to turn the oven <laughs> off. He was like, damn, I knew I forgot body punching. Get him, Zytel. He yeah, said, uh, uh, Overall uh, takeaways from Sean Zytel. Uh, you know, not my favorite, you know, got Mike skills from yeah. Blair Cobbs, but I appreciate, especially as a media guy, I appreciate his effort in, yeah. in trying to sell his fight. I don't think Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford would have watched his fight unless he spoke up and, and got people's interest and made mm-hmm. people watch his fight. It didn't turn out well for him. But I think in today's sport, we have too many guys who put no effort. And I, I prefer you maybe go a little overboard like a Blair Cobbs as opposed to no effort at all, you know. And uh, some of these guys have pay-per-views to sell where if you do a good interview or you, you sell your fight well, it, instead of 150000 maybe it does 200000 buys. And these guys, in that, they don't even want to sell their fight. And he did. And they, he had no pay-per-view upside. Now, granted, granted, when you're the champion, you don't need to set, you're getting $5 million because you're such a good fighter sure. that even if you don't open your mouth, people will pay to watch you because of what you can do with your hands, with your skills. So yeah. I get it. But Muhammad Ali, Marvin, Marvin, Hagler, Marvin Hagler didn't like doing interviews, really. But he would stay poolside for an hour, two hours, and he'd give you some sexy quotes. He'd, do, he'd say something to the public to make them want to tune in. Yeah. And so I, I do want to say for Cobb, before we, I, I, you know, all of us, you know, yeah. <laughs> were entertained by what ultimately happened to him. after. But he got us to watch and he got Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence wouldn't have watched unless yeah. he opened his mouth and got them to watch. Yeah. So. And I, I, I appreciate say, his effort. Yeah, and I even said last week, boxing is one of those sports where you, you can talk trash in any sport, but mm-hmm. you have to literally get punched. And he mm-hmm. talked trash. He got punched, and he lost. So and and what's crazy is they lost the 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 star of the show and was still able to carry the show. And uh, Cobb's had a lot to do with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you gotta give my man. <laughs> gotta give my man credit. Yeah, but yeah, he lost. I, I don't. I, we'll see what he does. I don't know. I mean, he'll. he'll I'm sure he's still talking. Hey, talking he, trash. he'll be a solid person. <laughs> I'm still talking you, trash. What's hey, you keep you keep laughing. Cops gonna get on your ass. Who me? Yeah, because you. <laughs> hey, co- hey, black cops. Sean's Ward well, over here laughing well, at your highlights. His afro is bigger than yours. Yeah, he get on your I ass. Know. Hey, what I say last night? See, no, yeah. I ain't. Well, he also <laughs> he also he's gonna get on your, your ass. Hair, your hairline's he gonna get on your ass. He also he got go hit. And one time it like went left and went right. But <laughs> but he's still. I, I, what I was saying is, I still think he's not gonna all of a sudden completely yeah. be different and come out and just be no very soft spoken. He's gonna come out. He's gonna he's gonna talk his trash if, if he wins his next fight. Oh cool. well, let's he talk, loses his next fight. Let's fine. speak to this. He got stopped this fight, but he didn't take any punishment. Like like. Like mm-hmm. not, not devastating the, punishment. Like Fifteen punches that landed in the last combination. I don't think I don't know how much that landed, but you know I just don't think that there he, wasn't anything devastating. He hit the this. guy with some big shots too. Man, yeah. fighters have a different uh, threshold for what they consider taking true. punishment. Oh, oh, yeah. we, we're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> man, that looks like because when, when the but, ref the ref steps in, so he hits him with the left hand and he stumbles into the ropes, and then I'm pretty sure he threw fifty punches and every, he went fifty for fifty because <laughs> every punch landed. <laughs> I get what you mean. It wasn't Meldrick Taylor, I, Julio Caesar, Chavez. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. Like you piss Not in blood a, the yeah. next day. Devastating yeah. knockout. Yeah, I, I guess I can get that. I, I do have a different threshold of punishment. And, and tips to all fighters. Do not go in the ring with a fro. Because no. it looks even worse. His hair was just rolling. Can we get, can we get the final combination? It's not the Afro's fault. Tell you uh, what, no, man. My, no. dad, my dad told me to cut my hair. I think I was like maybe... Yeah. Five or six fights into my pro career, and he told me to cut my hair, and I was pissed. Mm-hmm. But like we we lit, I was like trying my best to like be like I don't want to cut my hair, you know what I mean? And he says he says you got to cut your hair, 
I didn't understand it. He said, he said, you're going to make right. somebody miss All right. and your hair's going to swing and they're going to think you got hit anyway. Hey, hey relax. Go, go Carson got something to say. So he hits two, three, four, five. He didn't miss a single punch. The whole conversation. But he is rolling. Uh, he's, rolling. he's rolling. He's, he's making a yeah. miss. Don't you say he's making a miss. <laughs> <laughs> he gets stumbled back and then he literally fires and I don't think a single one was a complete miss. They, maybe some of them were grazing, but every one of them landed. But... Rashidi Ellis looks good off this win for Rocha. So yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Rashidi Ellis looks good for upset and Virgil Ortiz, but I still want to see it. Get well, get, and get well soon, of course, to Virgil Ortiz. Hopefully, mm-hmm. he's he's back. Bernard seemed to like really be stuck on that he should move up to fifty four, but he, he's he's a, he's a big one forty seven. He is for sure. And for him to have uh, weight problems this early, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I I would still like. I'm still curious as to what he looks like against the top guys at forty seven, but. Yeah, his health yeah, is we, clearly. We, we want to see that yeah, first. His health is clearly more yeah, important. So if right. he needs to move up, move up. But uh, yeah, when do we want to go to the other main event? We wait. We saved it. Edgar yeah. Berlanga. You got anything else to talk about? Not that I can think. I, I don't. I, I think Tim Bradley on the broadcast summed it up pretty well. I'm. The, I'm not. I'm not a former world champion, future Hall of Famer like Tim. So I don't want to say all the things he said yeah. that mm-hmm. he has license to say. He was. It was just wasn't he was impressive. He was cooking. What did Tim say? I believe the quote was something from the the chosen one to the phony one was the quote from Tim. Damn, he said that? I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way. He apparently said it before and then he mentioned it again and and Joe Testor was like, do you maybe want to like not go there? And he was like, yeah, but he was like, it was a terrible performance. His face right now, because I know everybody's seeing it, but Mm -hmm. his face right now is, is, his posture is is, 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 defeated. Defeated. And he won the fight. He won the fight. Sean, he... The only time the fight was exciting is when Steve made it exciting. Yeah. Remember when I said and his he lost power the fight. maybe wasn't that that devastating? Well, it really wasn't. He never really landed much. Well, he really though. need to land a punch <laughs> to have power. <laughs> no, but that having power and you yeah. know, not landing are two different things. You know, but, yeah, and he didn't do either of them. Right. No, but he has well. power. He just wasn't uh, able to yeah. get it going offensively. He landed some hard body shots and... Uh, I think in the round nine, he did club him with a right hand on the inside that slightly stumbled. But he really wasn't able to show his power all night. Got yeah, yeah. Let me say this, man. If anybody, <laughs> if anybody that knows Edward Berlanga, Edgar, Edgar excuse me, Berlanga, and sees this podcast, tell him to get off social media. Tell him mm. to not listen to anything that anyone is saying to him. He even, just turned off the podcast. <laughs> right. Even right now, I, I, I turn the podcast off. Even right now, at the very end of a fight that you win, in your mind, you're defeated. Emotionally, you're defeated because you know you didn't get yeah. people get, give people what they, what they came to see. What he needs to do is go back with his team, and they need to redirect how he's going to perform in his fights. His fights were, first 16 fights were all about getting a knockout. That went away. Now, what is your career going to be about? Now, what is your boxing going to be about? Yeah. It can't. No, it can no longer be about getting the big knockout. What it has to be about is setting up yeah. the big knockout, making sure you get the big knockout. But you got. He's got to do put all those pieces to the puzzle together to start to set that up. There's no jab from the outside. That's so frustrating to me. There's no. Faint from the outside. That's so frustrating to me. There's no bob and weave. There's no stepping forward. There's nothing coming from Edward Berlinga from the outside. And from a guy who has got his kind of experience, amateur and now pro, that is unacceptable. This is what he needs to do. Cut off social media. Stop listening to anybody that's going to bring him down. Listen to everybody who's going to be a motivator and a factor to him being better in the boxing ring. Get the information from from whomever you need to get the information from. I heard Dre in the corner. He said, get back to the basics. You got to get back to the basics in the gym. Yeah. Again, we'll go back to Shushu. Shushu can throw a counter right hand, left hook, and then be defensively aware. Even if nothing's coming, I need to move the way I need to move. That's training. Yeah. You can tell Edward's not Trey or uh, Edgar. Berlanga. Yeah, Edgar. Just stick with Berlanga. <laughs> Berlanga is not trained to punch and step forward. He's not trained to throw a double jab. He's not trained to cut off the ring. He's not trained to, to bob and weave faint. Not enough, even if they do that in the gym, not enough to put it down on fight night. 
Well, I think what you're saying, and obviously you, you have a great boxing mind, like Andre Ward, who after the fight pretty much explained exactly what you're saying. He said he hears stories about how great uh, Tim both said, you know, how great he does in the gym. Mm. And so he said the coaches at that point can tell you, hey, double your jab, faint. And you'll say, yeah, I got you and you'll do it. Mm -hmm. But then in his mind, he knows when I hit you with something, you'll go down because mm -hmm. he said that's what he dealt with his first 16 fights. Mm -hmm. And then when he gets in the ring and that doesn't happen, he's, he's kind of frustrated. One of my biggest complaints, and it also goes back to Casemiro and Regan Dow, <laughs> nobody has to make it an, e an easy fight on you. So after the fight, well, I had to fight a guy who, who ran the whole night. He he. I, I'm supposed to sit there and take a punch. Yeah, that that I don't I don't care if I don't care if he, he runs the whole fight. You and there's going to gonna be guys. With, and you knew who you was fighting. Yeah. And there's going to be guys with bouncier legs and 37 year old Steve yeah. Holes. And it was the same thing that that um, Connor Ben said after he fought Granados. Oh, he, he ran the whole. Oh, I had to run, chase him around the ring. Okay, that's fine. Cut the ring off. And, and you complain about like 37 year old. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rolls, think get your ass up in there with Caleb Plant. He going to move and he going to touch, touch your ass yeah. every time you come inside. Rolls, yeah. That frustration, it, it, it frustrates me so much. And, then he, and he even said after the fight, well, yeah, he sat there with Triple G and he, and he, and he threw. So that's what we learned from that. Yeah. And he yeah. got knocked out in the fourth round. So he learned you know from what? that. He thought, maybe I should just sit here in exchange. My and dad, I, when, when he has guys come in and train with him, he he's, tells everybody like, yeah, just let them do what they're going to do. Right. <laughs> and it's like, this dude came to train with you. Yeah. He says, no, I know. He says, I want to see what he does before I do anything with him. And I know you've been in the gym yep. with my dad. I've seen him say just that. My dad will watch guys not, not throw a jab or throw a jab without moving their feet. He'll watch guys uh, plod and wait and wait for that perfect punch and throw that punch. And after a week, if that guy's still there, he's like, come on, come with me. You're going to get right here in the mirror. And he's going to treat you like you're five years old. Yeah. He's going to make you go through the basics of boxing. See? Step with each punch. Throw the jab slowly. Make sure the hand and the foot are working together. They're connected. With boxing, you have to be connected all the way through your body, physically, mentally, emotionally, the, all, the whole nine. And then once you get in the ring, if you've connected everything outside of the ring, once you get in the ring, everything will move together. The, the, the greatest you never see them out of position. Mm -hmm. The greatest, you always see them closing the distance when they're ready to close the Shoot, distance. Even the good. Even, even the good. Even like the really good. <laughs> even the good. You see, you can see the, the method and the approach to what they're trying to set up and what they're trying to do and accomplish. My dad, a guy like Edward Belanga, my dad would say, right here in the mirror, and this is where you'll be for the next 30 days. Yeah. He's like, and if you don't- Michael Jackson, you're going to be the man in the mirror. If you don't like it, that means you don't want to be any different than from who yeah. you are. And that's what my dad believes in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can't help but, but, but believe in that too. Get off social media, get back to the basics of boxing, yeah. and make sure you have the basics and the core, the foundation. Build that and go back to the ring and put it down. Start to use a jab from the outside, double jab. Use things that are going to close the distance. I mean, I just... You can't tell me <laughs> that somebody's running if you aren't doing what's necessary to close yeah. the distance. If you aren't making it look like the you're trying to is, fight. I've said it a thousand times. The ring is only so small. Yeah. They can't run to the concession stand. They they can only go a certain amount of places. <laughs> they can't hide from you. Yeah. They're only within those ropes. So yeah. and a couple of things with Berlanga. Yeah. Bob did a hell of a job building him. Absolutely. He, he shout all credit to Bob. And you build him so well that you mentally Flipped him that I'm a KO artist. I can get anybody out here. Yeah. Also, you know, this is a different. This kids, some kids are generations different. Carson's big on social media. You can say whatever the hell you want to Carson. It doesn't affect Carson. With Berlanga, I think it affects him. He know he's got all these area, all the hip hop world, and is there. They he know yeah. they coming to. He, then that they Joe come, Papoose, yeah, they're coming into your locker room before the fight. You gonna KO this guy, champ? Yeah. KO and get him out of there, champ. Yeah. yeah. And that's all in his mind. He thinking all that. Also, you got Coach K. What uh, he got his dad. You got Mickey oh, Bait. Yeah. Mickey Bait at camp, but he's not in the corner. Yeah. You, what's his head trainer Andre name? Andre Rozier. You got so many, so many people talking. I heard, I heard people talking over each other. Yeah. I don't know what he's listening to. I feel like once he goes back into the ring, he doesn't listen. To, he doesn't hear nothing. What about the stuff that Mickey Bay told you in camp? Yeah. You're Mickey's, not going to grasp all that in one yeah, fight. Yeah, it's so much. Sean, I think at the most you had two voices at the most. And Bear, that, that's it. Your, and your dad wouldn't even play that. 
yeah, at the end of the day, it's the port away. Yep. We're going to oh. do this shit the port away. Yep. And I think his dad needs to be, because everybody's not going to say nothing to you. It, his dad needs to be a realist with him. Get like get off social media. F all this trying to be a superstar. Floyd Mayweather effect. Get back to boxing. You're young. You're talented, young man. Use what you got. And but know, you get some box. Get your boxing skills up. And I know I've heard this about the Giants, and I've also heard this about the Yankees. They say like players that go to those organizations, they have to be ready to perform in New York yep. because if they don't, they're gonna hear all about yeah. it. I feel like it's like a a Yankee giant effect for him where he's not he sold out the Hulu theater is a lot of world champions. Who yeah. Can't do that. And, and now know, he's got to, so, now he's got to be able to down. perform, you know? So yeah, man, I, I, I think that I don't know who's like really pushing the buttons. I, Dre, I know Dre's been with him for a long time. Jay Rougier, I know that Dre's been with, with him for a very long time, but I don't know if he's the one saying, you know, Hey, let's go, let's go to Vegas and get with Mickey Bay. I don't know if he's, you know, Hey, uh, K Karama can, Sometimes can help that's the with promoter. this or that. Yeah. Yeah. So, he, yeah, he's got to he's got to minimize the, even the information that's coming to him. Yeah, and I'm going to put it on Dre. Dre's got to make sure he's getting the right information. Sean, you shouldn't get outlanded by Steve Rolls. Yeah, I mean, I know I kind of hyped him up last week. You shouldn't be outlanded by him. It, it's just the out the out the ring stuff I see yeah. him do. Like I said, it's the Floyd Mayweather effect. Sean, you made millions, man. I don't know if my man made millions don't like tell that. Tell my business. Don't tell my business. Motherfucker, no, you made millions. The biggest you made person millions. made 100,000. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, my man got the jury the hanging out with this, this court side. I mean, do your thing, man, but you don't got to push it out there pulling up in a Maybach truck to training. You don't have to F what people think. I don't it's care. A, it's a lot of fighters from New York that that happens to. I know, man. It, Again, you I go from zero to having what? something in life, and that's what happens. Yeah. I don't know Edward Berlinga. Edgar. I don't know Edward. What the hell? I don't know Edward Berlinga. Yeah. Well, how do I keep saying uh, Edward? I keep Nobody said of, like, it. Edward James. Edgar, Holmes excuse and, me. Yeah. I don't know Edgar Berlinga personally. Someone has to tell him if he does not perform in the ring, whatever he has outside of the ring mm. is going to slowly disappear, move yeah. away. Yeah, he'll get paid. He'll get he'll he'll get his purse money and all that. He'll be able to wear his jewelry and things of that nature. But but. Some of those Fat Joe, we saw Fat Joe uh, last night. Fat Joe's Great going breakdown after the fight. Said he only lost to Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Joe might watch the next one from home. Adrian Broner, this is Adrian Broner. He had everybody. Yeah, Adrian AB had, had everybody. World. Yeah, he slowly started. Yeah. Uh, Once you are not doing what you need to do in the ring, people are not going to want to it's it kind of is what it is people would love to be with the champ mm -hmm. I, I had to learn that for myself and i kind of was like this is cool like everybody it's just because i'm a champ you want to know me and it's you, cool and you know us we've been around you forever hey when motherfuckers come around we'll be like hey that's fake ass yeah you know you know how we are oh, i was there after the julio <laughs> but, yeah. i'm like it's cool and i always understood like in order for these people to keep contacting me keep or it. or return my texts yeah, when yeah. I when I text all them, all of a sudden it starts coming back green. You're yeah, like, <laughs> all that you gotta you gotta keep putting it down in the ring, yeah. and then outside of the ring, you gotta continue to do what keeps those people loving you and wanting more of you. The best thing he can do is get off of social media, get back to basics, get back to the basics, and then beyond that, like you said, like you know, some of those people, even those those hip hop guys and all that kind of stuff, tell them like, yo, I'm, I'm at the gym. They'll appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. They'll appreciate they work that. work on their craft the same way you They'll appreciate the, that, that what they come to see, they know that next time they come see you, you're yeah. doing what you need to be doing, you know? It's fair to say my my comment about, he, about his struggles was, was I, I felt like I was being Absolutely. judged that it was off base last week. And Absolutely, then Carson. We saw that. You can't you, say- uh, This is not your first time being right. Yeah, it's close you, to you, know, you, 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 you can't say, uh, oh, my arm still felt, I, you know, I tweaked it, but no excuse. Yeah. You know, I- just to talk about the fight, yeah. because I Berlanga won the fight, right? I scored the fight for him. Yeah, we were pretty damn close. Yeah, yeah. Was, six, oh, no, no, six, no, no, four. He won. Six, I had, four. I had six four. You could have told me five five. Well, I know so, how you. Man, you're Steve Rose, he ran too much, man. Steve. But he he's, but he, he is consistent he made the, with how he, he scores fights. Yeah. He, he we ran, know the style he likes. Yeah. you know. But he so, ran too much. But he made the fight exciting. Yeah. It was only exciting when Steve exchanged. He. So I thought. You thought he won? Se no, <laughs> I didn't think. No, Berlin got. Oh yeah, Berlin yeah, yeah. yeah. He <laughs> he won round seven and eight were the clearest rounds for me. The guy yeah. rolls box beautifully in seven and yeah. eight. So Berlanga's credit, 
Um, Rolls, he, that, that straight right hand was his shot up top. That was the, the beautiful shot that landed for him that did enough to actually win him rounds, not just keep him competitive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in nine, he tries to start letting the right hand go. And to Berlanga's credit, he started shooting his hands up and then not, sometimes not even seeing it coming, but just boom, and would shoot an uppercut to the body, shoot an uppercut up top. And he was effective with it enough with Rolls that Rolls didn't let that right hand go in the 10th round at all. Yeah. And so, you know, credit to Berlanga. He made a little adjustment and um, got through his right uppercut, got, see, got into the body a few times. And he did enough to still win. There it is again. He did enough to still win the fight. So on the belt line, but um, <laughs> on the belt line. One more thing I want to yeah. say is routine as well. Because um, we, we, we know anybody that's like been, been boxing, we know that there's, there's called, uh, what, what do we call them? Um, we call them uh, gym champs. And those are the guys that they are great in the gym. And then you get into a fight, it's like, yo, where'd all that go? Yeah. If he's doing well in the gym and then he's not coming to the ring and putting it down, start to create routines for you to kind of like Give him that in the gym, and then once he goes to the ring, if he's not using his jab, maybe it's not throw the jab. Maybe it's whatever that routine was that you created in the gym yeah. to get him to get comfortable. Kind of like Gary Antoine Russell. Yeah. yeah they very similar. Yeah. And you should hear Ant and I before the show. We're unbelievable. Then we come out here and... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sean, you know, you saying gym rats, uh, gym champs. Uh, if, if you're just dominating, let, let's say he's dominating his uh, sparring partners. When you say, hey, get the F out of here, let's bring somebody in that's going to challenge you. Oh, absolutely. I'm pretty sure your dad's not just going, oh, Sean, you not that damn good. I I, I, I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why? He's pushing you for greatness. <laughs> Always. I never forget your dad's, your dad said a lot of stuff. He's like, I'm pushing you for greatness. Yeah. But yeah, if you're just sitting there dominating, shouldn't you be like, get out of here. Let me get somebody else in. Yeah. yeah. He needs to be sparring with. He with, needs to be pushed and sparring. He needs to be pushed. He needs to be I pushed. don't see him getting pushed. So, yeah. I, so I'm he's 19 and 0 now. Obviously, every still you, young. Yes. 16 KOs. Yeah. 24 years old. Um, and you can't compare everyone's gonna be different. How how does a fight right now go with him and David Morrell? Yeah. Why would you say that? Dave, why, <laughs> why you do David? David, <laughs> David, Mur da David Morrell da knocks da him out. David Toaster. Yeah. 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 And David Morrell's six and oh. Hey. Ooh. Hey, you know so, what? I, I, you know what? Go I, ahead. I, you think Berlanga beats? No, no, I, I, I don't. I reserve an opinion on that. One. David uh, yeah, Berlanga will never see Canelo Alvarez. Give that up. It's over. He he's. I, he's he was, and no. No, I'm saying he's 24. What, by the time he gets to put the, <laughs> put the mic down, what you get? But, so but I'm saying, I had to get. I had to get closer. No, I'm he's saying about the time. He, <laughs> I want Holyfield. First off, he's not going to make it through that B level fighters to get to Canelo. Canelo's going to be gone by the time he gets up there. Yeah. But I, don't, I think he gets stopped by Benavides. He gets stopped by Caleb Plant. He get outboxed by Caleb Plant, whatever Caleb wants to do, honestly. I don't even think this conversation is fair for him. Why? So I tell mentioned Canelo right. and Benavides last week. Why don't you mention? No, no, don't. Bob, don't, Bob, Bob and Aaron Bob did said, last year. Yeah, said yeah. he's going to be making a fight soon. Yeah. Mm. I didn't mention it for this year <laughs> no, or no, next year. You said but a couple he, years, but yeah. I'm like, yep, I, did. I don't think yep. in a couple years he's ready. Yeah, I think they're going to spend the rest of this year, maybe the rest of 2023. I knows. just gave him a whole bunch of advice. Just yeah. let him use the advice first. Six Take months, him. he's going to be gold. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not writing him off. Nah, David going to pass his and, ass. And, and I don't, and I, I'm not writing him off like he's You're just trying to call like, a spade a spade. Like, this is it, but he's he's struggling. Yeah. Like, Who's the yeah. first big name? Is it? Is it uh, uh, Danny? Danny? Uh, how, do you, how do you think Anthony Durrell goes? Does it, does he beat Anthony Durrell? I don't think so. Not, uh, yeah, that uppercut that Durrell just got the last guy yeah. with. Would That's be a, a good fight. Issue. I ain't gonna front. I think, think Ant would. I think Ant would eat him up. Yeah. What, what about Danny Jacobs? Old school. Ant. What about yeah. Danny Jacobs? So, I mean, you're, Danny, uh, Danny doesn't look good lately. Like, 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 but this isn't. We have to keep going back to the the Carter State. He's not Xander Zayas. He's he's 24. He's 19 and 0. You can't just be. At this level, yeah, you can't keep fighting scrubs. You have to. You've mentioned it before. Once you get to a certain place, no going you back. You can't go back. You have to. You tell that to Jaime Munguia or go up. Jaime, Jaime, <laughs> Jaime Munguia would beat the. He's gonna, he would beat Carson, the dog shit out of everyone. Carson, it's like he went from D he level. Would force him to fight, and that's. I think that's what we need to see. He went from D level to C level and struggled. Yeah, he's and struggling the, right now. He can't get out of this level you know, right now. B B minus, and he's just he's just. Well, Munguia was a couple years back struggling with the Dennis Hogan's of the, you know, he's turned, he started turning the corner too a little bit. Look, I'm not throwing in the towel on my Brooklyn night. What, what do you nah, think? Nah, he's young. Yep, 24. Nope, yep. Next year, give him Billy Joe Saunders or something? 
Billy Joel. Yo, it's boxes. March. Why are we talking about next year? Yeah, I, I, I feel like they're going to drag this out for the rest of the year. <laughs> Two more fighters that we never heard of. For him to get right? Yeah. And, and then that, what about, I, I, who, who yeah. are you going to put but, in the fight? But, it's time to fight. But I don't, I don't even mind that. I don't even mind like one, not soft touch, but one guy where it's like, get back to what you were doing. Tim Bradley wanted to see Jesse Hart. That's a good fight. I know. I, I heard Jesse that. Hart beats him too. Jesse Hart oh, gets a good fight. Maybe, I don't know about Jesse that. Hart. Maybe I'm, maybe Jesse I'm Hart, harsh, some, some, I think Jesse Hart beats him too. Yeah, so. but he winds up having too much Philly for his own good. And he got, he winds chinny. up exchanging he's with chinny. you when he doesn't need Jesse's to. Jesse's chinny. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. He, maybe, maybe I'm just too so, far off. So when do, Jesse but when do we take the jump? Two, three years? Let him we get just, a, let, I like your idea. Let him get a, a, a confidence yeah, builder. Him touch, yeah. And then let's see the Jesse Hart fight. That's yeah, a good fight. That's a good fight. Yeah. yeah. But who's that fight that he goes to get? Anthony Bernal? She, <laughs> hell no. Nah. Yeah, clip me. You're not getting down to 168. Nah, nah, just nah, tell me it's a weight thing. You, yeah, just don't, yeah, you don't want to get down to the weight. Put but, him up in there with Jake Paul? What, yeah. what is it? What do we do? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what he does. It, He's look, still young. Yeah, they got to just get it figured out. Go, the best advice the champ got for him is get off social get media. Get off social media. You, you can see the reaction. The I see what Sean's saying. Yeah, that's yeah. my He's thing. He's disappointed in himself. Yeah, yeah, that's my thing. My, my thing, and, and anybody who's paid attention to me, I, I have a, 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 a degree or certification now in, in, in life coaching. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've been so into the psyche of people for a long time. I, I know what he's going through right now. He's so disappointed and down and essentially he does, he should not be because he won the fight. Mentally he lost. And I think that the, the best way to get him back and going is by pushing the positivity of, this is all we got to do, champ. Power of positivity. The shout, out to, shout out to the new day. It's the power Thoughts of positivity. Things. Yeah. Hey, nope. We didn't say this. Is he shell shocked from the last fight? He took a big shot. He did. He did. Is he, he still uh, shell shocked? He is maybe struggling with you know what's coming back his way. Yeah. Okay. He is, yeah. He is even if it's not the power, part. maybe it's just the. It's like I never been down. Something coming back. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the only only thing that I could figure why he wouldn't throw a jab. That's the only thing I could figure. He shell shot. Usually, when guys don't throw a jab, it's because you're worried about the return fire. Get and he ready for that shit. Yeah, because it's gonna it's be boxing. Man. It will be coming forever. It's <laughs> boxing. You do this and you go like it's that. Boxing. I'm gonna keep it real. Like it really is that simple. You do this and you go like that. And then how do you take the power off of that? You do this and you take a step I back. I wish you would did that against Terrence Crawford. <laughs> he did for nine Andrew good Brown. rounds. <laughs> this guy is Andrew unreal. Oh, unreal. oh all right, all right my, bad. my bad, my bad. I feel like you don't hit me. All of a sudden, I feel like you don't hit me. All of a sudden, no, I look terrible. I see Terrence like that. Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> Oh, Terrence in the room? Shit, he'll You kill. late. <laughs> My God, is that Terrence Crawford's music? Oh. I'm just Aww. saying, like, it really is. It's that simple, man. I just, I, I know he's got the right people yeah. in his corner. K Corona, they just got to work the right way. Great trainer. They just got to gotta work the right yeah. way. Hey, yeah. the Coach K guy's got to respect. You know him? I know he's of Coach K. He's very respected. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've, we've, we've and, and Andre Ruzier has been, he's been around forever. Is that, yeah. is that four voices? It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, anyone yeah. listening to this podcast knows. Like, oh, maybe, maybe we take it down, but uh, yeah, they'll, they'll figure it out. Um, we have fights coming up next week. We can, we do nothing. We need to harp on. I like Tim Zoo. Almost forgot. Yeah, I was so, gonna say. But I really like Tim Zoo. Tim Zoo, Terrell Gache, Cleveland Zone. Oh, um, that's actually a pretty decent fight for him coming over to the state. Very good. Tim mm -hmm. So Tim Zoo, great body puncher. I love. Ooh. I love. I, I, I've got a chance to talk with him during the week um, before me and you met up to see Shakur spar and. Really liked his mentality. Really like him. I, I love how serious his actions show me he's serious. Mm -hmm. Dad comes from the business. Yeah, well, Costa, <laughs> Costa freaking zoo, man. Yeah. And, 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 and he's not looking to write off his dad's coattails right. that much. His dad stays home in Australia. It's it's he's not constantly pumping his son up. You got yeah. your own career. You got your own life. And him coming here, fighting a serious professional like Terrell Goucher, and not coming here demanding a X amount of million dollars. This guy could easily, he may, I think he may even already be the IBF mandatory, if not closing in on it, but he could easily stay home, get to 30 and 0, become the mandatory. Eventually, Jamel Charlo's going to move up and fight whomever for the vacant IBF, win it in Australia in front of 20,000 people, and, and be the big fish in a small pond. Yeah. But him coming here, his actions show he's serious and he believes in himself and he wants to be the best fighter in the world in his division. And he has some beautiful balance. He has a he has a nice, beautiful balance stance. Beautiful body puncher. Um, only time he uses his jab is to set up the power. He yeah, I, I would like to see him 
because he has a good jab. I would like to see him, you know, just jab his head off every now and then and stay on the outside. But he's looking to land the thunder from down under. Yeah. The apple, he's not a puncher like his dad was, but he has real pop in both hands. I think great he stopped balance. the guy to the body sh- with the body shot his last fight. Beautiful. He, he has a great left hook to the body. Really good body. Great puncher. uppercuts up top. Good right hand up top. Um, and, and to me, he is the, the biggest threat in the division. Oh, there's a one, there's another 54 pounder I'm thinking of along with him, but he is the biggest threat in the division to the winner of Castaño Charlo. Mm-hmm. And he, I'm, I'm happy he's fighting in the United States. He's got a fun yeah. style. He's a serious guy. He he's comes to, to hurt his opponent. And, um, I'm just happy he's stateside, man. Terrell Goucher, he walked Javante Clark into that right hand, but Javante Clark was really tall and gave up his height, kind of, you know, reached, fell in. I don't think mm-hmm. to, Tim Zhu's going to do that. Mm-hmm. It's going to be an action uh, fight. Yeah, yeah. Well, Terrell Goucher, though, we do see him in the past sometimes get gun shot. He won't let his hands go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, so, kind of not to harp on Berlanga, but I think Tim Zhu cuts off the ring pretty well. So if anything, well. he's going to, it's going to say, okay, you want to be defensive? Let me be even more offensive. But he's the boss in there like his dad was. Yeah. Like he's, immediately is like the alpha and there imposes you and backs you up, takes the center of the ring. And I know um, Michael Rivera is on the undercard as well. I can't think of anything else um, too notable on the undercard there. And then in the UK, Josh Warrington, Kiko Martinez nice. rematch. Yeah. Worked out kind of well for Josh Warrington. <laughs> Kiko <laughs> Martinez just completely smokes kid Galahad. And, and now you get a chance to get a belt back against yeah. the guy you beat already right. years ago. Right. I would assume Warrington wins. Um, thankfully, Kiko Martinez isn't Mauricio Lara, or he wouldn't, but um, Ebony Bridges, fan of the show. She's going for world title. Mm-hmm. Um, for Chelton. And, 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 yeah, and then the last one is um, <laughs> top ring. I told you yesterday, not really sure what Nakatila did during that shot, but okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what he did in the Shakur Stevenson fight for them to be like, you know what? I really like that. You had that right hand cocked all night. I, yeah, bring him back. I like you know what? We put him up against Burchell. He's going to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to let it go this time. <laughs> I, I like I like watching Burchell. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a fan of I'm a fan of what he brings to the ring, so it'll be interesting to see how he deals with. Because Shakur, even in that fight, that was the one where he got the criticism of, hey, you didn't really do much. Born. Yeah, it was boring. Burchell, first off, has never been in a boring fight. No. And that is a big right hand that, that Nakatula has, so... And what does Burchell have left, man? Yeah. He took a serious punishment. Yeah. He took punishment. Yeah. Okay, you know, Blair, yeah. you said Blair Collins did it. You asked me, you yeah, asked you, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he did. Okay, he did. okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that is punishment. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who else is on the, I can't think of who else was on the undercard for, oh, Elvis Rodriguez is also back for, um, on the, the PBC card. And Shakur actually picked Burchell to win, which surprised me because usually fighters, they pick the guy they beat to win. because yeah. right. Yeah. PBC. No, 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 I'm saying... Elvis Rodriguez on the PBC card. It's on, on the Tim Zoo. Uh, yeah, he's on the Tim Zoo. I'm oh, looking through. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cleveland Tiger Johnson. Oh, Tiger. And Delante. Dante and Dante Benjamin. Nice. Are both. Delante's uh, on the PBC card. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, they're on the uh, top rank. Card. Okay. They're both. Oh, that's on, right. They're that's both right. on top rank. Um, but yeah, Elvis Rodriguez, Joey Spencer. Joey Spencer. Yeah. Back in action. That guy fights. He fights a hell of a lot. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, guys. He fights it. a lot, but... We're going to have a problem. No. Oh, 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 I want a problem. I want a problem. I want a problem. I'm, I'm not sure we... I'm not sure any of these scream upset to me, uh-huh. but that typically means there will be. <laughs> Anytime we're like, yeah, there's no way anything crazy happens. Something crazy happens, but... Hey, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to announce it. Hey, well, a fight just we heard about today. Our boy Shane Mosley versus Gabe Rosado. Yeah, that's you what said, I'm going to say it. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Is he still it. working with Justin? Uh, actually, you know what? i seen his dad in camp with him. Ooh. Okay. Shane. Who's I don't know if I say that. Who's dad? Shane. Jack Shane Mosley. Jack Mosley. Senior Mosley. is actually in oh, camp. Oh, wait. With Shane Mosley. My bad. Yeah, I'm thinking Shane Shane's Mosley dad. Senior is actually in camp with his dad. Is he a trainer? I don't know. Stay tuned. I, the next episode of Dragon I'm probably giving up way too this much. Probably, this is where breaking news. No, I think, <laughs> I, I, I'm going in. I think to, to hey. enhance the fence. Come on, we want to snitch. I think, we want to snitch. I think, Shane, I think Shane Jr. posted that on Instagram. Yeah, okay. Because I believe Boom. I saw that. All right, so his dad's in camp helping him out. I don't know if he's information. He's an official trainer, the Gabe Rosado, April 9th. Ooh. Uh, I don't Antonio. know about the official trainer thing, but uh, I, I said I true. said I don't know yeah, if he's oh, official. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if he's still with Justin yeah. and all but that. Yeah, he posted at least but a picture I, of his dad. I, I mean, it's a you tough know, fight for both. Yeah, of them. tough fight for both. Uh, Shane defensively has to get a little better on defensively sound. He was fighting a great fight, man. Last fight, first half of the fight, then Shane turned it up. Uh, got more aggressive on the end of the fight. 
But then his defense slumped. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that against Gabe Rosado. It, was, it wasn't even the offensive needed. output. It was that he was looking for a big punch for yeah. some reason. And it wasn't needed. We're like, no, you're good. <laughs> like, you're good doing Just your normal offense. Yeah. Just keep doing it. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then half. Gabe Rosado, you never know what you're going to give off of Gabe Rosado. He's, he's crafty. Good yeah. counter puncher. He, he, yeah. Old school, man. Yeah. Comes, coming out of a one sided battle with, with Jaime Munguia, who yeah. was previously mentioned. But. You know, we saw Gabe Rosado. We yeah. did the back the bully. Back the bully. I yeah, mean, I mean he, he's always I always been a Gabe Rosado fan, but yeah, that's my brother. I got to roll with Shane. I, I always got to roll with my guy. I think I feel like Freddie has really helped uh, Gabe Rosado kind of mm-hmm. change his his boxing style into more of a a mature yeah. uh, seasoned veteran. I'm gonna bait you in, and I'm gonna hit you, and I'm gonna just move and turn and things of that nature. We saw him in a very boring fight with Daniel Jacobs. I was gonna but say that set the bar really low for any future fight. I was gonna, yeah, yeah I was gonna say I think that it just mm-hmm. neither of them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you you need a good dance partner, and I don't think they they didn't match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Music, <laughs> was, music wasn't playing for either. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what was happening, but they're at the uh, age where they're trying to counter someone, not not yeah. go get them. And he was like. Yeah. All yeah, so, so you punch. He's like, no, 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 you punch. Right, it was right. like you're in a four way stop waiting for somebody. Man, I'm 35 yeah. years old. I don't get it. Man. Yeah, you so I, I do. Yeah. I think I feel like Freddie's really helped and and really brought Gabe a, a, a little ways. You know, since those early wars that he had been in in his career. So it's I text Shane. I think last night, the night before, and I said, I, he told me he was going to be fighting Gabe. I said, Oh, I like that fight for both you guys. So I think that's going to be a really good boxing. And, and how special would it be for sh- his br- dad to come back in his corner and they go on a little run? You know what, man? How special it, would that be, man, for it, the game? It sounds cliche. You don't know anything about father? And it son. sounds kind of like, yeah, is he? Re- is that really a big deal? But I got a feeling Shane Senior being connected. To it, junior, it's what junior needs. I, yeah, man, I've been wanting that for a long time. Because you know, Shane. Shane, my guy, his relationship, me and your relationship is a little different. I tell you some shit that I wouldn't say. I say something to you that I wouldn't yeah. say to Shane. Yeah, because you know we're close, but we're not that close. Yeah, but I feel like the dad, his dad, might be the yeah, might be the. I, I've been the I've been wanting that for him for a long time. So I hope that this this is, and I also know this about Shane. I know we got to wrap soon, but I know senior is like he's off to the moon with his knowledge, right? And I got a feeling that there could be a disconnect there in terms of how he uh, tr- how he delivers his his knowledge to his son because mm-hmm. he was giving it to me and he was like, yo, I- just do it. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was like, this is Shay. I can't do that. He's like, no, nah, come on, champ. You got it. Like, like it was nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, and he's so good. He after the Kell Brook fight, Sean and him spent maybe two or three hours just working on holding, breaking holes. Yeah, I was like, "What the hell?" Yep, yep. He, Sean, Sean, that. different yep. stuff. I got, yep. I, I, I got to shoot you guys sparring. Yeah. back then. Yeah, still up there. If yeah, see it. Yeah, you want to <laughs> see? There was a shot in there. The oh, right hand. Yeah, yeah. I heard you. <laughs> that was a, that yeah. was that. Yeah, you were, you were stepping. I you were, no, I oh, you were faking. Yeah, I was yeah. I definitely heard you saying Sean Porter. Round one movie coming soon. He was acting the whole time. <laughs> hey, it was a wobble. I actually think Shane Mosley's become underrated. Think so? Yeah. Senior. Yeah. He's one of the true great fighters mm-hmm. of all time. Yeah. He was incredible. I mean, yeah. that lightweight. He was as good as we've ever seen up there with Pernell Whitaker and Roberto Duran at lightweight. And then that first fight with De La Hoya. I mean, he started. Don't get me started on Shane Mosley, but he's, <laughs> the the new millennium 2000 began with him beating with Shane, De La Hoya, right, and in right. 2009, the decade closed with him knocking out Margarito. So mm-hmm. he actually started the 2000s as the welterweight champ and closed it as the welterweight champ. Yeah, I've thanked him multiple times for knocking out Margarito, <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the, that was one of the greatest performances yeah. of boxing history. Yeah. What he did to Margarito, I mean, he mm-hmm. beat the shit out of yeah. him, he yeah. demolished yeah. him. I'm telling yeah. you, I've told, I've, I've think, I think Junior for Senior knocking out Margarito, <laughs> and Sweet I, Low. I think if he, can, yeah, if they go on a run. If I'll, he changes his name to hey, Sweet and Low and Shane no, no, in the no, corner, no, it could be Sweet and Low because they're together. Yeah, <laughs> you all, everything that you've been waiting on. But yeah. if he could get across to Shane, which Shane could be open to listening to his dad, if he can get across and they can get that connection done, I feel like that's the little thing. That connection, you and your dad had that connection. Yeah. If they can get that father son connection, because his, his dad is greatness. Your dad was greatness. Mm-hmm. If he get if he can get that across to his son. Shane, Mo, Shane Mo, Jr. could be something yeah. out of here, man. I, I was in the Performance Center when he would come down to the Performance Center with Shane Jr. R.I.P. the Performance Center. Yeah, <laughs> R.I.P. the Performance And formerly the Hit Factory before it. Um, yeah. 
it just little because you said he Shane knew all these little things and he he knew things that were carried that are carried on from the black and white days from his dad Jack. Mm -hmm. And I remember one thing he told me on the inside. Uh, I was you know messing around hitting the bag while you were finishing up. And he's like, when you're yeah, yeah. He's like, when you're on the inside, he was like, yeah, maybe he'll come over. <laughs> he putting some extra you like, on his yeah, yeah, yeah. I do do that. And you had the, oh, Sean knows that. And, and, and uh, he's and, and making so, Adrian Broner noises. Hey man, I saw, Rick Ross said all these guys just breathe when they punt. No, Rick, oh. you, you gotta breathe when you punch. That's like, actually. Oh, you calling out Rick Ross? Oh, oh yeah, you know, that's, easy what, work. that's what Rick Ross easy does work. when he punches. He's like, oh. Hit him up. Oh. Hit him up. Hit him yeah, up. I, I'm a lot more afraid of a Jake Paul fight than Rick Ross. So go oh, ahead. You were oh, so oh. you were you were hitting the bag. <laughs> you were hitting the bag. Go Shane. ahead, make the fight happen, and let's, let's do it. Matter of fact, I'll fight for my man. No man, here, tell that. the story so oh, we can leave. I got yeah. hyped. You were, hit, you were hitting the bag. The in the bag, and, and just on the inside, he says, "Hey, if if you have no room on the inside when you're punching, flex off the opposite side you're punching on." And every everything every coach to me was always, you know. Get the get. Make sure this this side this side is or whichever side you're punching is is right. And so Shane goes. Sometimes you're not gonna have any room to generate that. So you do it right here. You go like like it, I can't do it the way Shane did. And, it, I, but, and that was right. what he was showing me too. And I was just like, yeah, this doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> At least <laughs> I tell but him. But when he does it, him. but when he does it. Results. <laughs> yeah, no, but if, if he were, himself, he he's got to be the one to show you how to do it, and then yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. But I guess the, those were little things he he learned from his father that yeah. go back to Ray Sugar Ray Robinson, and so I, I love some, me some Shane Mosley. Great guy. Yeah. Shane needs to dumb down his coaching, like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. They just didn't understand why. Dumb it down. Just do it. I, just do it. Oh yeah, man. I don't mean to make this uh, show Kenny Porter heavy, but my dad, like, he dumbs it down. Yeah. My dad wants you to get it right, mm -hmm. and he drills it until you get it right, and it starts with the basics. The last thing we'll say about Shane Jr., I learned, I learned that about Shane as soon as we started, like, hanging and training and stuff and like that. you've been in the ring with him. Yeah. I said, I said this kid knows too much of the, of the um, advanced stuff, and he doesn't know enough of the basics. basics and the beginner stuff. I said, yo, if he could get, go back to the beginner stuff and, and get that right, he's going to be a force. Because he comes out in the first round, watch the next fight. He'll look exactly like Shane Sr., Sugar Shane Mosley. As soon as he comes out, I mean, the hands got a little shake and he's got that little bounce. <laughs> just yeah. like Shane, but it's, it don't, it's don't fire the same and it's because of the stuff that he didn't learn. So it's like he learned that stuff, but he learned it the, the, for bridge, the second word, bridge, incorrect way. Bridge or, the gap a little bit. Yeah, he's got to bridge the gap. Which is a song, Nas, with his dad. Come on, it, it all kind of okay. Okay, it all, stop dumb, the music. Dumb it down, Lupe. Yeah, come on, we tied it all together. <laughs> what a show! R.I.P. Razor Ramon. Yeah, man. Yeah, Razor. Hey man. yo, this is yeah. away. Yeah. Hey, let's. I'm gonna put Sean on the outside of the edge before the show's over. <laughs> oh wait, I gotta make this announcement. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got an announcement. I reminded you. Hey, you got an announcement to make. Oh right? yeah, you do got an announcement. I don't even know where this came from, but I oh, got okay. an announcement. Okay. Um. We are, we are doing no, keep it up you're good okay. we're doing we're doing a, a closed drive first weekend of april um start getting ready for it I, what i want you to do is send your clothes we're gonna have a p.o box i have it ready for you next week send your clothes anything you got for us to give to the homeless y'all pitch in whatever the case may get be get heavier so then you outgrow some of your clothes so you have more clothes to donate there you go boom boom chest boom, not boom. checkers but we're doing it at the port away uh, foundation is doing a clothes drive the first week in April. We would love for you guys to donate any clothes you don't want, don't have, or don't need to the port away so that we can give out to the homeless out here in Las Vegas. If we got anything extra, we're only going to do it one day. We got anything extra, I'm going to make connections and get it out to other cities so that they can hand it out to the homeless. So we're trying to get back to the homeless and just improve the world, man. God bless you guys. And uh, we'll, we'll have information for you next week as far as the P.O. Box. Actually, you know what? We'll put it in the comment section, oh. right? Can we do that? Yes. Yeah. I mean, they can send it to my house. A lot of people. Ain't nobody sending nothing to your house. We got a PO box for you guys. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure it's in the comments. Uh, like, tell a friend. God bless y'all. We we'll see you on the next one. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I gotta get get Sean. <laughs> What's up? I'm Showtime Sean Porter. I'm at. Follow me on IG at with two T's. This is the Port Away Podcast. This is Anthony Brunal and this is Carson A. Merck. Tell them what to do. Hey, like, subscribe, comment.
follow follow us on all social media platforms. <laughs> subscribe. I'm from Louisiana. I'll talk with a B. Let's do all it. Right, Let's do it again. Let's all right. It. Just introduce yourself. Okay. And then tell them. And then you tell them what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Support Porter Podcast. Already. You're already here. And <laughs> hey, hey, this is our outro. We're gonna do it how we want to. I'm Showtime Sean Porter. I'm Anthony Brenno. Carson A. Merck. Like, subscribe, comment. This is the Porter Way.